Hey everyone, welcome back to our channel and Happy New Year. As you can see in the video, we are talking about our spring seeds and um, a mini haul for our spring 2022 planting. Before we get into this video, make sure you subscribe, like this video, comment, and share with your family and friends. And let's move along. All right, so we have a lot of different seeds. I'm really excited um, because I was able to get new seeds for our students, for all of our students. Um, I'm expecting to have at least up to no more than 60 and no less than 50 students working with them this year um, at both gardens that we over that we have and I oversee. And so I was able to get a lot of different seeds from a lot of different places. We got some from Home Depot, Lowe's, our local nursery here in Stone Mountain, Georgia, and some from Dollar Tree, surprisingly. Um, so let's talk about them. So first, uh, as you can see on the table, I split the seeds up into different categories. Um, we have flowers, brassicas, leafy vegetables, tomatoes, peppers, root vegetables and herbs and beans and peas. Um, and then some miscellaneous um, seeds as well. So let's start off with my favorite vegetable in the garden, tomatoes. We have seven varieties um, and I'm going to show you what they are now. And so our first variety is the honeycomb hybrid variety. And this is a, I believe a type of cherry tomato. Um, it's orange, it is a sweet tomato and it has a lot of clusters on the stem when they start to grow. This is what they look like. I'll do all of the um, seeds here. I'll make sure to do an up close view so you guys can see. Um, our next variety is the Gardener's Delight. It's pretty similar to the um, Honeycomb Hybrid variety, but these are red. Um, and these, I believe, are indeterminate. When I do grow these with the students, these get taller than me. So I'm 5'11", and these plants tend to get up to 7 feet, even more. Um, and so this year, I want to teach more of our students how to use the vertical space, like all the space up here and not on the ground, um, how to use that vertical space for your garden. So using trellises, using um, bamboo shoots, using the actual wind tunnels to have the plants grow on, different things like that. So I really like this variety of tomato. And it also is sweet, just like the honeycomb, but not as sweet. All right, our next tomato is the beefsteak tomato. These are the, so these two packets I got from Dollar Tree. Um, if you are looking to, f are you, if you're in the search for seeds, but you don't know where to go, you can either go to Lowe's, Home Depot, or I would suggest go to your local Dollar Tree because they have seeds that grow and um, the, the plants are the same as if you would have bought seeds from another store. But like I said, these are the beefsteak and these come out to be at least um, nine to 12 ounces each tomato that grows. And this will be, I think our third year trying to grow beefsteak. When we grown beefsteak in the past, the, the fruit, it takes forever to produce. The plant only produces up to, I would say three tomatoes fully and that's it. Um, so hopefully, fingers crossed, this uh, growing season we are able to really grow a lot of beefsteak tomatoes. Um, this is the Rama VF tomato um, from Dollar Tree as well. It's a heavy yielding variety used, per preserve, used for preserves like tomato paste and um, purees when canning. And this year, personally, I'm going to try to start my own journey, own journey in my home garden on... Um, canning and growing our my own produce to live off of so wish me luck <laughs> and we have at least three more varieties um, this is another type of Roma tomato we got this seed packet from our local nursery um, and this is the San Marzano tomato so the San Marzano tomato is very um, 
popular among tomato users and tomato eaters. Um, and it said that tomato, San Marzano tomatoes are the best tomatoes to use in sauces, in your dishes when you cook. Um, so I'm really excited to use this type of tomato. Um, it said that San Marzano tomatoes are the mother of all paste tomatoes. And these tomatoes have been bred in the U.S. since 1920. So it's pretty cool that people have been growing tomatoes in the United States, these tomatoes specifically, since the 1920s. And we are going to keep that tradition going. Um, this year, I also want to teach our students more of how to um, save seeds. And so um, when your plants grow, you know, you have different types of plants that grow seeds. Each plant will have a type of seed that will grow um, once it's reached that end um, time meaning like it's about to just you know die and um, it can't grow any more fruit so i want to teach our students more of how to collect seeds um, this is the tomato brandy wine red um, it's an heirloom tomato it's a beefsteak type of tomato so we have this like i said showed you guys previously we have this beefsteak so like regular beefsteak but this is a different um, variety of beefsteak tomato um, and it's an heirloom if you don't know what an heirloom mean, means heirloom just means that the plant that you have from the seeds is going to be just like the parent plant from where those seeds came from so if I grow if I have a brandy wine tomato plant right and I take the fruit from it after it ripens and I collect those seeds and I let those seeds dry out and I grow them, grow new plants from those seeds I just saved. The plant that grows from those seeds will be just like the parent plant that we started off with. So that's just, that's what heirloom means. And for our last tomato variety, this is the red cherry tomato. So it's just like, it looks just like this one, the um, Gardner's Delight tomato, but the fruits are um, a little bit smaller in shape, and I believe they have a lot more um, fruit on the stems when they grow. And so some of these tomato plants we're going to start next week when we start our gardening sessions back up in the garden. Um, we're going to just start them in the greenhouse, let them grow. And when March comes, when the frost, the last day of frost has passed, we're going to just start um transplanting them. All right, moving on to, those are tomatoes. Now we're gonna move on to peppers. Now peppers are the second type of um, plant that I am really happy about growing. Um, so we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. We have eight varieties of peppers. So let's get into them. So for the first two, these are seeds that I got from the nursery as well, our local nursery. Make sure you su support your local nursery. It's very important to keep those small businesses in, in business. Um, this is the Orange Sun Sweet Pepper. Add it to kebabs, salads, fajitas. It's a sweet pepper. The normal sweet pepper I think that you guys get from like your local grocery store. Um, it's a sweet pepper, like I said, and it can, this packet will provide us at least 16 plants. So we're not gonna use the entire packet. We're gonna use at least five seeds, five to six, um, because we want to make sure we have at least two plants that produce enough fruit, if nothing else. Um, my next pepper is the pepper chile Sentaka pepper. It's a hot pepper. Um, this pepper is a Japanese pepper and it's really used for Asian cuisine and it each uh, pepper plant will produce fruit that are two inches long so we are really excited about that um, and we're gonna do a lot of more different a lot more a lot of different videos um, in regards to peppers and how to take care of them how to grow them this is the Hungarian yellow wax it's a hot pepper it's spicy it has different colors as you can see it has red orange yellow it's a spanish variety um yeah and we're gonna start this inside as well the next pepper is 
Granville mix. I've never tried to grow these. These are different colored peppers. Look, we have dark green, purple, um, red with a little pink in it, green, yellow, orange, white. I'm really excited to see how that's going to taste, how it's going to look. Um, and some of these I'm really excited to grow because I would like to do taste, taste testing with the students. So like once the fruit grows, we can cut up a few of them, um, depending how many we have. But we can cut up a few of them, rinse them off, and do a taste test together to like taste the natural sweetness and spiciness of each fruit. So I'm really excited about that. Um, this is your normal, you know, bell pepper that you get from your grocery store. It's the California Wonder Sweet Pepper. Um, these peppers are one of the best large bell peppers according to the packet. And they have it has crisp, thick flesh, and has a mild, pleasant flavor. And it's high in vitamin A and vitamin C. Did not know that. Okay, cool. All right, the next three varieties are the banana pepper. You know banana pepper when you go to like Subway, you know, get a sandwich, you have banana peppers on your sandwich. These are them. Um, we've tried to grow these previously, I think back in 2020. They didn't do that well, I'm guessing, because we didn't really start them when they needed to... Um, get that boost of, you know, hot, humid air, um, the ground was warm. So this year we're going to make sure we plan um, really good and make sure that each plant has the conditions that it needs to create the most vibrant fruit. This is the Carnival Blend from Burpee Seeds. It's just like the other one I just showed you with the different colored peppers. Um, but this one doesn't have any green. It just has like your yellowish tint with a little. And this packet is the another California Wonder packet. These, I don't know if these in the seeds keep falling out. I'm not sure if um, these seeds will do anything because previously they have not grown very well for us. So we're just gonna sporadically throw these seeds out in the garden when the temperatures warm up. Um, and if they grow something, they grow. If they don't, it's okay. Because we have we've had this seed packet for at least three years, three four years now, and they have not produced anything. Next up, we have um, our brassicas. So we have bro three different varieties of broccoli, cauliflower, and cabbage. So first up, we have. These are seeds from Fairy Morris. We got them from, I believe, either Home Depot or Lowe's. So the three different varieties of broccoli. We have De Kiko. I don't know how to pronounce that. De Kiko Sun Hybrid Tomato, um, not tomatoes, broccoli, and the Green Sprouting Calabrese Broccoli. So back in, I think it was 2020, we did try, well, I think it was the end of 2019, going into 2020 our students did try to grow broccoli they started growing um they we had starters but they did not take when we put them in the ground so hopefully this spring we're going to do our best to grow broccoli um, cauliflower we never really tried to grow cauliflower these are the early snowball x variety of cauliflower from fairy morris and um it's a big it has a big white bulb and not many people eat cauliflower but i want to give our students different ways um, of eating you know different plants to eat um, to experience different flavors you know this is the purple cabbage from burpee seeds we've tried to grow this for many growing seasons we have one purple cabbage growing at our school garden so hopefully this in the next few months before it heats up that purple cabbage will be able to produce us a cabbage to harvest um, but this is a salad delight purple cabbage um, it's a tasty early maturing red cabbage with three pound heads long harvest window so i'm guessing that means like i said the, it takes a long time to harvest i'm guessing that's what that means our next variety not variety, but our next group of plants are our root plants. So we have one, two, three, 
four, five, six, seven, eight, nine different plants that we're gonna grow that are root plants. So first up are our turnips. It's the purple top white globe turnip. We normally use the turnips just for the leaves, not so much for the, the root plant um, that grows in the soil, but more so the leaves, because you know, people like to eat the leaves with mustard greens, collard greens, you know, things like that. Um, and then we have at least three different varieties of radishes. Our first radish is the icicle short top radish. Um, it grows out to be about five, I would say five to six, probably up to eight inches long. We grew um, these last um, growing season, last fall. Those came out pretty well. We have the radish champion um, variety. It's a red, it's a small little red radish. And then also the early scarlet globe radish. So nice growing those. I love growing radishes because they grow so quickly and it's an easy plant. You don't have to do much with radishes. So if you want to have a, if it's your first time growing something and you don't know what to start off with, try radishes. You can put them in salads, you can roast them, you can put them in um, dishes with some potatoes, things like that. Very good. And our last variety of radish comes from um, the Whole Kids Foundation. It's a seed packet from them. Um, it's the Cherry Bell Radish. And we have two varieties of carrots. We have the Scarlet Nantes carrot. It's a long, skinny um, type of carrot. They are slim, sweet, sick. They grow to be, to be about six inches to seven inches long. And they are very good for freezing. So we're gonna harvest these and um, let our families know that get the packages, the produce packages to let them know that they can store them in the freezer. And then we have the long imp imperator, imperator number 58 carrot. So we've been growing these carrots um, since we started Project Great, and these do so well. They do so well. They have a great germination rate. Um, they don't take as much care. They don't need as much care as most carrot varieties. Um, and they, they do fairly well here in Georgia. And then our last two plants are the potatoes, the Clancy variety, which is a hybrid, and our Walla Walla onions. So I've been seeing a, a lot of people grow Walla Walla onions on YouTube, and they come out very pretty. Um, it's a lot of onions. It's a large harvest when people do grow these type of variety of onions. So I'm really excited about that. And then for the potatoes, I do want to start growing potatoes with our students. It'll be my first time growing potatoes and then it'll be, of course, their first time as well. Um, I do want to get more varieties, different varieties of potatoes, um, just to, you know, when we harvest, we'll have different varieties, not just one. Now moving on to cucumbers or um, melons. Well, squash. When we have three different varieties of cucumbers um, and two different varieties of squash. So let's do cucumbers first. This is a seed from Burpee. This is the straight eight cucumber. Um, and then we have another straight eight cucumber, but this packet is from the Dollar Tree. And um, the straight eight are the most popular of all homegrown cucumbers. And then we have the Space Master 80 cucumber. This seed packet came from the nursery. Space Master 80 variety of cucumbers are really good for containers so if you don't have that much space in your garden and you really want to grow cucumbers i would suggest you getting the space master variety and then moving on to our squash we have melon cantaloupe um we've tried in the past to grow cantaloupe two times one i think just last fall and then another time well no not last fall i think it was last spring and then back in 2019 we tried to grow in the fall did not do well both times didn't do great they produced the fruit but we were only able to harvest one 
um, cantaloupe out of the entire time of us trying to grow cantaloupe. So hopefully this spring we can grow cantaloupe. Um, the temperatures in the soil need to be at least 70 to 90 degrees Fahrenheit. So we'll try to start um, do some seed starts with these probably late February when the frost, the danger of frost has passed. Because I don't want to damage um, the cantaloupe. That would be a waste of time and resources. And then our last squash, we have the dark green zucchini, which is a summer squash. Um, as you, if you didn't watch our last video, well, not the last video, but um, it was, I would say the third to last video on our channel here. We grow, we grew zucchini. And it was a really cool experience to grow the zucchini with our students. Um, our largest zucchini weighed about three pounds, I believe, and it was about this long. Well, yeah, this long, three pounds. Um, so, but un unfortunately, the um, borer pest, fortunately, the borer pest that we had, it demolished the plant so we were only able to harvest at least three zucchini which is not bad for our first time but um i know what to do now to protect our plants um from that type of pest so this spring we will not have to experience that again moving on to beans and peas Ooh, i'm losing i'm losing beans i'm losing beans i am losing beans all right, so the beans that have just went everywhere are the Kitchen kitchen King beans. These beans are very prolific, uh, which means just that the once you plant the bean, it's going to grow. There's no question about it. It's going to grow, and it's going to produce um, beans, green beans for you. And our next bean is the Yard Long Red Seeded Bean. Um, these beans grow up to be 18 inches long once they produce the bean. So these are a type of bean pole, a pole bean. Um, we grew these back during the summer of 2019. We had a great harvest. I love growing these. The only problem that we had was there were ants everywhere on the plant which brought um, aphids. Well, the aphids brought the ants. And when I tell you the the trauma I had experienced, experiencing that, it was horrible because there were aphids everywhere and I couldn't do anything about it. I would spray neem oil. Um, I tried to stay as, or as organic as I could because I didn't want to um, introduce pesticides into the garden because I don't really like doing that based on my research and based on watching other people's YouTube videos. Introducing pesticides to your garden is not really good because it kills off natural bacteria in the soil. It can kill off good pests in your garden. Also, if you haven't watched our video um, discussing good bugs versus bad bugs, make sure you go watch that video right here or right here. Click it. Um, but you know, pesticides can do a lot of damage in your garden. So I tried to be as organic as possible using neem oil and other organic type of sprays like soap and water with a little garlic oil or uh, peppermint oil in it but nothing really stuck and I just towards the end of the growing season I had to just cut it and just let the bugs have it um, but this year I'm going to be proactive and teaching our students how to protect the plants in the beginning stages of the growth of the plants. So when the plants are, you know, seedlings, when they starting off and they get about what, 10 inches long, start spraying neem oil, start building that resistance against pest. Our next plant um, in the category of beans and peas, we have these sugar snap peas. I love growing snap peas. The only thing is, um, for me, I have, we've, the only thing is for us, we've not had that large of a harvest of snap peas. In my mind, I always want us to grow a lot of food, um, a lot of plants. I don't want to see any soil. I'll, I only want to see the green um, growing out of the soil. But when it actually comes to 
executing that, I tend to forget and I don't have the students start as many seeds as I would like to. So I'm going to keep myself adhering to the goal of plant, plant, plant. Because we have, we have at least close to 50 different packets. Well, not even 50 because this is 50 right here. I would say oh, up to 100 different packets of vegetables that we have. Um, and I purchase new packets every other month just to keep our, um, our stock up. I really need to have our students plant a lot of plants so we can get a large harvest. Our next variety of bean is the Big Kahuna bean. Um, we've only grown this once. That's why we have so many beans in here because we only use a few beans out of this packet. Um, it's another, I don't think these are pole beans. I don't think so. Um, well, maybe they are. These are good for um, if you want to Again, if you don't have enough space in your apartment, your house, town, home, but you want to grow your home food, these are a good um, variety of beans to grow. The big kahuna because they're good for small spaces. So a container garden, um, if you have a balcony and you have a little, what would you call that? A container that goes on your railing that could um, suffice. And then we have our Kentucky Wonder. Again, these are one of my favorite variety of beans to grow because they're, like I said, prolific. They grow very, very well. Um, they need minimum attention. Just water them on a regular schedule and they'll do fine. The last pea variety is the Progress number nine. Um, so most of our beans and peas were given to us through our partnership with um, Hillside Atlanta. Thank you again, Hillside, for providing these seeds to us. Um, I can't wait to grow these peas with our students. Moving on to leafy vegetables. We have at least 10 varieties of um, leafy vegetables that we're going to grow this spring. Starting off with our ruby red Swiss chard. As you can see, we've used this packet a lot. Um, we, we only have about... 10 seeds left in this packet, um, but Swiss chard can be used as a, a replacement for spinach when you're cooking spinach, whether you're juicing it, cooking it in a pasta, using it, in a, using it in a salad, or whatever you're using spinach for, you can definitely replace that with um, Swiss chard if you don't have spinach on hand. Um, we have the Dwarf Blue Curled Vates um, a variety of kale. We've grown this kale ever since we started Project Great, and it's a great variety to grow. We have the Georgia Southern collards. We love growing collard greens here um, in our gardens. Uh, we have two different varieties of spinach. We have the Bloomsdale Long Standing Spinach, as well as the Teton Hybrid. Now, these um, come from Burpee. I really um, would suggest you either get burpee seeds or dollar tree seeds because the germination rate is out of this world. They grow really fast. Um, burpee seeds really do well when you give them the attention when they're just starting off. So uh, a good mixture of soil, some um, worm casting, some compost, um, and a little love. You know? and moving along to our other Plants. We have three different varieties of lettuce. We have the Rouge de Hiver. I don't know if I pronounced that right, but it's a uh, red leaf romaine lettuce. We got this packet from our local nursery. This is from Dollar Tree. This is the Paris Island romaine lettuce. And then we have our black seeded Simpson lettuce. And this is uh, these seeds are in a device called Seed Tape. So you can make your own seed tape at home. I believe we made a video um, back in 2019 on how to make your own seed tape. I will link it right here and in the description box. But all you need, if you want to make your own seed tape, um, you would need some flour, a water mixture, um, tissue paper, of course, and your seeds. And the purpose of seed tape is for small seeds like dill, carrots, lettuce, 
uh, eggplant seeds are small um, and the purpose of it is just to be able to see your seed instead of handling them like picking them out your hand putting them in the ground or in a container you could just use your seed tape once it dries cut it put it down um, it just allows you to maneuver better with your seeds or handle your seed it just allows you to handle your beat your it just allows you to handle your seeds better all right i gotta move along very quickly because my com my camera is about to die uh, our last leafy vegetable is the arugula uh, rocket variety and if you didn't know arugula is a wild leaf leafy vegetable it can grow in your yard but you must know what that plant is because i don't want you eating something that could um, potentially harm you so make sure you always check with your local nursery or local master gardener all right our last groups are flowers eggplants and herbs so our herbs we have dill two varieties are ducat and bouquet dill we have two varieties of parsley um, our big Italy parsley and then we also have our Italian dark green parsley from Burpee seeds we have some cilantro the common cilantro that you know grows in it that can be we have some common cilantro um, I think the name is common because it's just one type of cilantro I think there are other varieties of cilantro I'm not sure but the common cilantro is grown and sold at every nursery, every um, hardware store, Lowe's, Home Depot, Ace Hardware, you know. And then we have two varieties of basil. We have sweet basil and mammoth basil. Both come from burpee, burpee seeds. You know I love me a good burpee seed. And then we have oregano. This is the Greek variety of oregano from burpee seeds again. And then from our local nursery, and then from our local nursery, we have a lemon balm. So lemon balm can be used in teas. It can be um, just used as a aromatic in your kitchen, in your household. Um, so I'm really excited to grow this um, herb in the garden this year. And then moving on to our last group of vegetables, we have eggplants. And okra eggplants we have the Lestata de Gandia eggplant and that is a purple white striped eggplant we grew this um, this past growing season last fall we harvested only one eggplant I don't think we started it in the right growing season these love warm weather but I, we started them in the summer it was too hot last summer so we didn't do a too good with these um, but we have uh, the other eggplant variety is called black beauty um, is this packet says it's one of the best all-around eggplants for home gardens um, so I'm really excited to see how this produces for us um, and then our other packet we have okra and this is a crimson spineless okra we've grown okra at least two times um, in our gardens and the okra does pretty well last time we grew it was last year and we grew it in buckets and they did fairly well in the buckets so I'm really excited to see how well they do in buckets and in the ground and our last category are flowers so our flowers um, not only am I excited to grow tomatoes and peppers and other varieties of plants but I'm truly excited to grow flowers because flowers bring lots of pollinators to your garden and just a lot of beauty as well. So we have different varieties of flowers that we're gonna start growing in the new year, this spring, and I'm going to be purchasing a lot more different flowers um, to add beauty and you know bring pollinators to our gardens. So, um, I will start off with the German chamomile flower. This flower can be used to make teas. It has a great aroma um, and it brings lots of pollinators to your garden as well. 
And we have Snapdragons. This will be our second year growing Snapdragons in our pollinator gardens. Um, they're a beautiful flower. They grow very tall. I think about uh, for a flower, three feet tall. Um, but they're beauty. They're beautiful. And I think, if I'm not mistaken, hummingbirds love this flower. So I'm really excited to grow that flower. Um, we have Echinacea. This seed packet came from my local nursery. Um, it's a purple cone flower. Pollinators love it. And you can actually use Echinacea um, to benefit your health, whether that be in a drink, in a um, tincture for your skin. So I'm really excited to uh, not only see this flower grow, but use it in, in an example to show our students how to use this for their health. And then we have two varieties of zinnias. Uh, we have the giant cactus zinnia and the semi-dwarf pumila zinnia. They both will grow about uh, roughly 20 to 30 feet tall. I'm so sorry, not feet tall. 20 to 30 inches tall. And the reason, another reason why I want to grow flowers in our gardens is to do like cut flowers and to just deliver, you know, bouquets of flowers to the students, their parents, teachers, staff, community members, just just to give out flowers from our gardens. And then we have marigolds. This is the Cracker Jack variety. And then our last seed packet is the Mammoth Sunflower. So I want to grow sunflowers, not only to harvest the seeds for sunflower seeds, but to just see um, how tall our plants can get. And this packet says they'll get roughly about seven to 12 feet Hopefully they get that tall because that'll be really cool to see. Well, guys, those are all the seeds that we have for um, right now that we plan to grow. Like I said, I will be doing some more purchases throughout the growing season of different varieties that we do not have as of yet. Just to keep that growing, um, our growing season going um, and then utilize all the space and time that we have. Thanks for watching. If you have not subscribed already, like I said, subscribe, like, comment, and share this video. Make sure to follow us on social media. Uh, we are on TikTok at Project Grape. That's P-R-O-J-E-C-T-G-R-A-P-E. -E. And we are also on Facebook and Instagram. Eastern Banks Learning and Life Center, E-B-L-L-C-I-N-C. -L -L -C -I -N -C. And we will see you guys next time.